Thorny Park has the unfortunate circumstance of being sandwiched between Six Flags Great Adventure and Hershey Park. Now these two stacked lineups really show how good coaster parks can be. Still, with the modest eight coasters of their own, the park can supply its own set of thrills too. From classic woodies to vintage steel coasters, here are all the roller coasters at Dorney Park ranked. Starting off in 8th place is the park's kitty coaster, Woodstock Express. Now this is the standard Zamparilla family coaster, opening in 2000. It's a necessary ride, but there's nothing really to dive into here. Next up at Lucky 7 is Wild Mouse, which unsurprisingly is a Mauer Wild Mouse model, built in the year 2000 as well. Now this is about as standard as the model comes, with two levels of switchbacks, of unbanked turns, and some small dips and drops. Now this is probably one of my least favorite of the model just because of how harshly it's trimmed. Most of these rides at least give that gimmicky thrill of feeling like you're going to go over the edge, but this one slows down so much and so sharply it really isn't any fun. Now moving along we have number 6, Thunderhawk. My second oldest credit, this opened in 1924 as Coaster till it was renamed in 1988. Now unfortunately this ride just doesn't really supply any noticeable forces besides some light jackhammering in the valleys. Now there may be a spot or two of floater here and there, but compared to the other rides of the same age like Cyclone, Comet, and Wild One, it just doesn't really stack up too well. It's probably a once a visit ride, but I wouldn't really bother waiting more than a few minutes for this coaster. Luckily it's usually a walk on. Entering the top 5, we have a credit that many don't actually consider a roller coaster, but it's Demon Drop, which is a Gen 1 intimate drop tower. Now the elevator style attraction is the last remaining in North America, and it was relocated from Cedar Point in 2009. Now I consider this a credit because of its track based system that it uses. It actually ends up with riders laying down at the end because unlike most modern drop tower, the cards slide down an L shaped layout. Now it's one of the more unique and a little janky experiences out there and it's just plain fun. It's very hard to find another one of these so to be fair it's only a drop but it's still a lot of fun. Now speaking of a somewhat gimmick attraction we move to number 4 for Possessed. This intimate impulse is another relocation coming to the park in 2008 from Giaga Lake. Now without its neighbor it is the park's newest addition and there was a big rumor this offseason that the ride would be removed for a new shuttle wooden coaster, but that plan seems to be on the shelf for now. Now the ride gives riders a few strong launches up two spikes, one with the spiral. There's no holding rank on this specific coaster, and while it isn't a very complete experience, I still have an affinity for these coasters. Riding in the back for the maximum hike on that back spike is my favorite, though feeling the full force of the launch on the front and spinning up that spiral more and more is also pretty great. It may not be quite as tall as Wicked Twister was, but it still supplies plenty of height on those spikes, and it's a fun coaster to ride a few times through the day. It's got a decent launch for a park that really needs one badly. Now we enter the park's big three. I, I guess it's more of a medium sized three, it's more accurate, but first up is Talon, the B&M inverted coaster that opened in 2001. Now these next two are very close, but what kills Talon for me is the absolute lack of inversions and exciting elements. The ride is crammed into a very tight space and it climbs up and around itself, which unfortunately leads to multiple moments of meandering. After ripping through three of the ride's first four inversions right off the lift hill, the ride focuses more on overbanks and sharp turns. In the back you do get some decent rip around those turns and it helps rise up to 52 on my overall rankings. But unfortunately, it's still my pick for the weakest B&M invert I've ridden personally. It falls a full 12 spots behind the Batman clones. Now if the ride had another inversion or two, I think it could really easily move up. I still think it's a quality ride, but it's just not quite there. A fun fact though, it's one of the quietest rides from the manufacturer, as B&M filled the track with sand to reduce noise in the local neighboring area. Speaking of B&M's, Hydra the Revenge takes the silver. More inversions per foot than any North American forest coaster, this ride really focuses on flipping riders quickly. Now the wacky heart shaped cobra roll is a memorable element, but it's really the jojo roll and straight drops that really make this a standout for me. Opening in 2005 to replace the wooden coaster Hercules, this coaster is just pretty good in all honesty. It doesn't quite hit that great mark, mostly due to that noticeable rattle throughout, which is pretty frustrating coming from one of the newer floorless models in the country. Now the model itself just doesn't really have that high of a ceiling for me. The overall pacing of the coaster is what boosted over a ride like Talon just by a hair. 
Now I could easily see these flip flopping depending on the rides I get in future visits, but for now it lands at 49th overall in my rankings. Now this ride is really relied on to be a standout in the park as the number two, but it would do a lot more good as a true supporting coaster in a different lineup. Finally, at number one is the park's hyper, Steel Force. Built by Morgan in 1997, this ride is all about some just fun moments of light floater airtime and taking guests out and back smoothly and quickly. It is the smoothest coaster in the park, but the forces aren't really there even compared to B&M hypers. The first half is about as dull as it can be, it doesn't really have a great drop or airtime hills, and if not for those returning airtime hills on the ride, it would really be a whole lot of nothing. Now the final hills do give some decent floater, especially in the back, but don't expect anything more than a little bit of lift. These Morgan Hypers really are the lower tier of the model, Intamin and B&M just really do everything better throughout, from the drops to the airtime to the layouts. Now my biggest pro for this ride is how smooth it is and the minimalistic restraints that really supply the freedom to enjoy the bit of forces the ride does provide. Now Steel Force breaks my top 40 and it lands at number 38, but it's 5 spots below Superman and Six Flags America, which I wasn't a huge fan of either. Now the two parks are very similar, just imagine if they had hired Intamin instead of Morgan here to build Steel Force. So that's going to wrap up this ranking, overall Dorney has a pretty okay lineup for a small regional park, but it isn't really designed to take on those bigger local rivals. Now, hopefully Cedar Fair comes around to give this park a new unique attraction, even on a smaller scale. I really do think that Shuttle Woody could really spark some interest in the park, especially from a coaster enthusiast side. Now, where do you think these rides really land among themselves? And for more rankings, make sure to check out the rest of the playlist. Till next week, that's all from the Shores of Island Coasters.